for more on this popular trend in the pros and cons, we're joined by Lee Abamonte. He's a travel analyst based in New York City. Thanks for joining us, Lee. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So when people think vacation tourism, it's all about sightseeing and relaxing. So who is willing to use their precious vacation days to volunteer? What demographic are we talking about? Well, it's generally wealthy first worlders. And when I say wealthy first worlders, basically anybody who has the money to get on a plane and to go to some place in the developing world like Latin America or Africa, those people are certainly wealthy. Even if you're not wealthy at home, you're wealthy compared to people in rural Africa, that's for sure. So it's, it's a not quite what I think when I hear volunteerism. Is, is a volunteer vacation less expensive than a traditional vacation? It's generally less expensive because all you really have to do is get the flight to where you're going, and if booked through one of these agencies, you'll, your accommodation and whatnot will generally be taken care of, and uh, your time is spent theoretically volunteering, so you're not spending money throughout the day, but uh, flights to Central Africa, West Africa can be pretty expensive, but it's generally less expensive, yes, than a traditional vacation would be for sure. So, Lee, you've traveled all around the world, and you've seen a lot of travel trends. What, what do you think of this? I mean, is there really something for everyone here, or do you have to be willing to go to maybe certain destinations to find whatever your cause may be? Well, I, I have mixed feelings about volunteerism. I actually was in Kenya, and I did a little bit of it about 10 years ago. And to be honest, I felt pretty useless. And that's because I don't have the skills that they're looking for. I'm not trained in, in, in medical, the medical field or in construction or anything. Basically, I ended up just like helping lift boxes. And for me, it, it kind of made me feel useless, so to speak, whereas some people go uh, and they're just happy to see smiles on kids' faces uh, in some of these really impoverished areas because it makes them feel good. But at the same time, that can be bad because then it's almost as if they're looking at impoverished people as a tourist attraction itself and they want to like take photos and put on Facebook and Instagram and it's almost uh, narcissism about it. So it's kind of a mixed bag for me. That is one of the criticisms of, of this. Do you think communities really benefit from volunteerists? Do you see this industry growing? Is it still just in the beginning stages if we're not uh, seeing something as organized as what you think you might, um, you know, accomplish in, in going to one of these trips? Well, I think it's definitely in the infancy of the industry, for sure. I think that more and more people, especially millennials, are dying to get involved in this stuff. But a lot, a lot of these companies are not as ethical as you'd want them to be. So you have to do some research before you book your trip and before you fly halfway around the world to go help a, a, a village because some of these companies make big profits off this. I mean, uh, like in the, the segment before, they were saying, I think it was $2 billion. I mean, that's a lot of money spent on people traveling to to volunteer and where's that money going and the other part of it is there's all these NGOs and other aid organizations already operating on the ground in these places and there's a lot of mismanagement with those organizations as well so I think there's a lot of research that needs to be done and uh, the leadership needs to be better all right Lee Abamonte thank you so much for joining us from thank New York you. City